What is up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Camp. Today we're going to be talking about another important Space Engineers concept, which is mining, refining, and assembling. This is the way in Space Engineers that you can actually make materials from scratch so that you can continue to build your base up to the awesome base that we all know it can be. Let's get right into this. First, we're going to start with mining. We're going to go into mining. We're going to talk about all the things that you need to know for mining since we haven't talked about it yet. So for mining, we're going to need a mining drill. If you're playing on any of the scenarios, you're probably going to start with a mining drill. So let's pretend we have a mining drill. We press I. We can see that we have it right here. So what we need now is we need it to be in our toolbar at the bottom. Let's press G. Go to mining. We have the elite hand drill. We don't actually have the enhanced one, which is the one, or no, the, the hand drill, which is the one you'll start with. We have the elite one right here. We're going to drag that down to number one. Now, in order to mine mining is the process of getting raw materials as, as you probably uh, know and if you're whether you're on the planet or in space there are materials scattered around uh, however on the planet they might be underground so well they, they mostly will be underground mining comes in two uh two ways you can mine uh underground so there's like iron underground or you can mine into a rock so if you see a rock there's more than likely going to be materials in it so what types of things can you get while mining you can get iron silicon cobalt nickel gold silver platinum uranium rock and ice now there's a couple of caveats there uh, first of all platinum does not spawn on earth the earth-like planet it spawns on the moon and an asteroid so if you want platinum you're gonna have to go there or you're gonna have to wait for meteorites to crash into the ground which might bring some rare materials other rare materials like gold silver and uranium typically spawn a bit farther into the earth and that's going to come into play in a little bit uh, rock is everywhere so that's if you mine any of this stuff that's all rock and finally ice is uh, is kind of a material it doesn't refine which we'll talk about that a little bit later but you can find ice on the, the tops of mountains over there or in ice lakes and we talked about in the first episode of space camp how ice is useful for uh, for the med bay so let's get going. Make sure before you go out on a mining expedition that you have a lot of hydrogen, hopefully a hydrogen bottle or two. So what we're looking for when we're mining on the planet is we're looking for either A, a rock, or B, an area with lots of black spots like this. And the black spots mean that there is ore underneath that area. So it's a little helpful cue here. So uh, the, one interesting thing about Space Engineers is that the mining drill is equipped with a little ore detector. It'll tell you what ores are within 50 meters. So if we get within 50 meters of an ore, we'll see the type of ore so let's get a little bit closer as long as we have that drill out we'll see so let's get a little bit closer here and we'll see if we can see what kind of ore is in here we might we might not if it's a little bit too low oh uh, we can see that we've got silicon magnesium and nickel these are three materials that are pretty good i would say uranium and iron are the most important materials but these ones will do quite nicely so let's go and grab a little bit of this now the drill has two functions it's got a drill function where you gather materials and it's got a dig function where you just dig out area now uh the left Left click is the drill function. It'll ga gather you materials as you're mining. The right click, however, will go a bit faster, but won't gather materials. Let me show you the difference here. This is left click. Oops, a little bit of lag there. This is left click. We're dragging out materials. And you see we've made a bit of a hole, but it's not that big. Now, if we right click, it'll make a bigger hole, but it won't actually gather any materials. So you can see that within about the same amount of time, we've made a much larger hole. So let's go ahead and go and grab some of these materials. Actually, you know, I've, I've made a marker for some iron. I don't really want to grab silicon, magnesium, or nickel. I want to stick with something simple. So let's, pre uh, let's press I. We'll go to our GPS, and we'll go to my marker, which I found earlier, which is over there, some iron. So we're going to go and grab a little bit of that iron, uh, just because it's a little simpler to grab. It's, the, it's kind of the most basic of materials. So we're at my iron marker, and you can clearly see that the iron is in there. It's in the mountain, so we just have to dig a little bit to it. It says it's 9 meters away, so let's go ahead and go for it. So we're using the right click here to get close to the iron, because the right click digs faster than the left click. Let's use L to turn on our light, and you can see that this reddish material is the iron. Now, none of this stuff floating around are actual rocks. These are just particle effects. Uh, sometimes it's a bit confusing to know what is particle effects and what is rocks, but you'll see these disappearing. So uh, let's go ahead and grab some iron. Um, we're just going to mine a little bit and it's all going to be placed on the ground next to us so you'll see it all right there uh let's grab a little bit of it our inventory is almost full so let's drop a couple of things this iron right here uh usually we would want to keep that but we don't actually need it right now because um uh, because we're trying to show off how to actually make that so let's grab a little bit of this iron here and you can only carry as much as your inventory can hold inventory. there we go our inventory is full let's head back to base with our yield and i'll tell you what to do next Welcome back to base. We're, we're back after our mining expedition. Let's press I to look how much we have. Ooh, 4,000. 
thousand and forty four thousand four hundred and seventy is how much that is uh iron ore so what do we do next now that we have the ore how do we convert it into materials like steel plates that are needed to build this or like construction components that are needed to build some other things well first we have to refine it and refining is the process of creating iron ingots from iron ore so the refinery is what will do that so the refinery will take in the iron ingots and convert it to iron ore after that, to get from iron ingots to the iron or the steel plates that you might need or the construction components that you might need or the small steel tubes that you might need, you have to go from iron ore to the material and the assembler is what does that. So we're going to create a combination of refinery plus assembler in a second. So in order to do this, let's go and put these in our toolbar. We'll press G, we'll go to all blocks and we'll search for first the refinery. So that's, that's what we need first. Refinery. There it is. Let's stick that in our number two slot. And now we need the assembler. Assembler. Stick that in our number three slot. We're also going to need some conveyors. Well, we don't actually need them, but we're going to use them just to, to show you how this works. So we'll use conveyors right here. Uh, we'll grab the one with the plus so because we know that we can actually have all of the conveyors just by using the scroll wheels. Let's go over to a random place. How about this? Just a random place here. We're going to turn the refinery. This is the refinery that we're placing first. We're going to turn it so that it looks like it's upright. Now, it doesn't really matter. It can be facing any which direction. Um, it's to your liking. So we'll place the refinery right here. And as long as the refinery has power, over there, we can see that our batteries are relatively full. As long as the refinery has power, it'll be able to work. So let's stick our iron into here and see what it does. Oh, you can see right there, it's already converting the iron into the iron ingots. The first step is complete. Now the next step is to get an assembler in here. Let's put our assembler right, uh, let's put our assembler right here. How about that? So we'll stick our assembler right there. Um, and now we need to actually connect it. So that's what these conveyors are for. So we'll go with the conveyor and then we'll connect it right here with a turn piece. Let's just turn this one around a little bit and there we go. It's now connected. So the both of these things actually drag materials. So the assembler, when we actually tell it to do something, will drag the iron ingots out from here and directly into itself in order to create things. So let's go to create our first thing. Now I've got some steel plates in my inventory and I've even got some interior plates, but you know what I don't have are construction components. Let's make a couple of those. So I'm gonna select construction component right here and it, you can see it requires one iron ingot. So you see on the in the middle side, one iron ingot. We have that because we know that if we look in here, there's at least one iron ingot. There's actually 2,500. So we can make plenty of these things. Let's make, uh, how about we make 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now you'll see it's going to start producing and it actually produces pretty fast. Uh, could we make more than 10? Well, here's the thing. If you control click, it makes 10 automatically just like that. If you control double click, there's 20 and you can just keep going up like that. If you shift click, it makes makes a hundred. So we add a hundred to the queue like this. And if you control shift click, it makes a thousand. So these are very useful keybinds. So you don't have to click a thousand times to make a thousand things. That's how you can make a lot of things very fast. Now I noticed that our assembler is going a bit slowly. I mean, it's not going that slowly, but we have 3000 things here. It's going to take ages for this to work. So how do we speed up this assembler? Well, there are two ways. The first way is using modules. So we're going to add a module to this thing to try and speed it up. Let's press G to look at what modules we have available. Mod. And there we go. We have the speed module. We have the yield module. And we have the power efficiency module. Now these do, as you'd imagine, the, the speed module will speed up the assembler. The yield module, actually, I don't think that works on the assembler. I think that's refinery only for yield. Uh, and then finally, the power efficiency module will make it take up less power. Now the assembler has a couple of slots for modules. Modules are pretty big. So let's go with the speed module real quick uh, and look to what this, let's turn it towards us and we'll see that it requires two little two little squares. Now, if we look on the top here, we see that that has two little squares as well corresponding. So let's go ahead and put our module on top right here. And let's see if it's speeding up. Is it speeding up? I can't really tell. Maybe it looks like it's speeding up. Uh, it's supposed to speed it up. And I think over time it does, it does actually speed it up. Now the assembler also has a couple more slots on the bottom, so we can put another one right here as well. Furthermore, the refinery also has slots. If we look at the bottom right here, it's got slots there, slots there, slots there. It's got slots everywhere. So we can stick uh, uh, modules on there if we want as well to speed that up or to increase the yield or even to increase the efficiency. So that was one way to speed up the assembler. But what about if we want to really speed up the assembler, make the assembler super fast? Well, turns out you can have multiple assemblers. You don't only need one. You can also have multiple refineries. That's a bit more complicated. Maybe I'll save that for an advanced uh, tutorial since you probably won't need it for a while. But multiple assemblers is relatively easy to do. There are just a couple of steps that you have to go through. So first, let's make another assembler. We'll place it in the same spot. In fact, 
we'll make two more assemblers. Put one right there. Now these are actually connected because you can see that they have little uh, little connectors on the, the right side and on the left side. So we know that this connector is connected to this, is connected to this. But just to be safe, let's go ahead and connect them manually. So we'll use a big conveyor here and here and here just so that we know that they're all connected. Now, unfortunately, the assemblers won't work like this by themselves. They actually need a little bit of setting up to do so that they know that they're supposed to be working together instead of working as one. Now, the way this is set up right now, you can press F, you can go into your production tab, and you can actually choose which assembler you want to be working with. So right here, we'll say you make me detector components, uh, you make me an interior plate, and you keep making these things. But what we really want to do, we don't want to do that. We want them all to be working on the same task. So we want them to be making this 2000 go down fast so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we're gonna set up a sort of um, a a boss employee as I like to call it the other the other terminology is a master slave relationship but I like to say a boss employee relationship so you've got your boss assembler and then you've got your employee assemblers and the employees will do what the boss says so let's call this one the boss assembler we're just gonna name this so that it's easier to see we're gonna call assembler number three uh, B so we'll put B right there we'll call these ones E's. so we'll have E for employee and then E for employee right here as well just so that we know which is which now for all of the employee assemblers we're gonna have to go into it production tab go to the employee assembler and click this button that says enable or disable cooperative mode we're gonna do that for the other one as well enable or disable cooperative mode so now if we go into this we'll see that our boss one does not have that enabled our employee one has that enabled and then our other employee one also has that enabled. And you can see that every assembler that we look at has uh, construction components in their queue. So you'll see this one, right? It's going down, but then it's going right back up. And the reason it is is because it's grabbing uh, tasks from this one and it's completing them on its own. So you can see that this is going down really fast because it keeps on divvying out tasks to its, its two employees. And of course, you can speed this up by adding more modules as well. And you can also add even more assemblers. I don't think there's a limit to how many assemblers you have. So you can really speed things up as much as you want. Of course, there are some other important concepts with mining and refining, uh, such as being able to go out with a mining ship and bring it back and having the refinery automatically pull materials from the ship using a connector. But these are more advanced concepts, and I'll get into that when I talk about actual ships. But for now, that's all you really need to know about mining, refining, and assembling. If I missed anything or if you have any comments or questions, please post that down in the comments section. If you like the video, please hit that like button. And uh, if, you, if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and do that. Get, get that. Give that little subscribe button a little bit of a little bit of love uh, if you want to join the discord server we have a discord link down in the description so definitely check that out we have lots of fun there and that's a good place that we can converse if you have any uh, other questions i'll see you guys in the next episode where we'll probably be talking about ships